I'm very sorry about that, but preparation. Um, my talk is going to be on in vivo measurement of flow dynamics and aortic wall shear stress. Um, the main reason we are interested in the aortic flow is that left ventricle aortic root and ascending um, aorta constitute closely linked dynamic system, which does very much sophisticated function. And this sophisticated function is highly centered in the aortic root, and that is dependent, also dependent on its complex uh, physical char characteristics, <coughs> sometimes involving uh, flow. And modern imaging techniques and CFD provide, CFD means uh, computational fluid dynamics, provides new tool for studying flow dynamics and ball shear stress. So we use this to investigate aortic flow. And my talk uh, from now on will be um, going to function of the aortic root flow and viability, followed by explanation of the um, methodologies, the computation of fluid dynamics along with um, imaging uh, techniques. And then I'm moving on to utility of the method on um, bicuspid aortic valve patient as well as uh, patients after aortic root replacement surgeries. So aortic root is centered, <coughs> positioned in the center of the heart and uh, in a strategic position for the whole circulation. And this does, performs very sophisticated function which are closely linked to its structure and viability and flow dynamics. And as you can see, these uh, valves opening and closing, and this dynamism is very important uh, in <coughs> the function, to the function of the aortic root, as described in this paper by Professor Yako in 1999. And this results in a highly predictable pattern of flow, which can influence back in left ventricular function, or coronary flow, or aortic wall integrity, and flow distribution to the rest of the body. And these pictures show uh, typical flow patterns of in the aorta, as discussed before, partially. And uh, because of this shape of the sinus and aortic root, we expect the flow from left ventricle comes through to the aorta uh, in the middle and accompanied by vortices on side. And this structure was um, even earlier time in 15th century described by Leonardo da Vinci, as in this picture. And also recent MRI um, flow mapping showed the structure of the flow in the aortic root a straight, going straight in the middle, accompanied by twin vortices. This helps um, the shutting the valve very nicely, and that is a very important part of the dynamism of the aortic root. And when it comes to um, interaction with the valve, in case of normal valve, the, because the valve opening is very wide, the flow from left ventricle can come through very smoothly to the aorta, as um, represented by the arrows here. Whereas in case uh, the valve is stenosed or for any reason narrowed, the gap between the leaflets is narrower, so the flow has to squeeze through the narrow gap, which makes, uh, forms a turbulent, strong jet and that might hit on the aortic wall, causing very high shear stress. Shear stress on the wall is a frictional force given by the blood flow to the wall, which is known to um, affect, uh, largely affect the biological activity in the aortic wall. And this is considered as a potential weakening factor of the wall structure. And that is um, a big reason why we are interested in the flow in the aortic root. And from now on, I am explaining how we look at the flow. So this uh, picture summarizes the workflow I do to uh, investigate the flow patterns in the aorta.
starting with medical images, constructing three-dimensional shape of the order, and uh, mapping the flow velocity from MO onto the mid-sinus location to calculate uh, velocity patterns in the, the rest of the aorta. That gives you a shear stress distribution as well on the wall. And for the um, imaging part, it can be um, as simple as ones acquired in clinically available 1.5 Tesla scanner. For example, this is the Siemens Avanto, which, was, which is used in uh, one of our collaborating hospitals. And these are examples of acquired images, one showing anatomy of the aorta from aortic root to thoracic descending aorta. And the bottom ones are uh, cross-section of the aortic root showing the velocity uh, distributions of um, the flow. And to reconstruct three-dimensional geometry from these images, uh, what we do is to segment out, this is an um, example image of a CD uh, cutting through the, uh, the chest. Uh, this is, although this is CD, the working principle is the same for MR or whatever other type of images. So first we segment out aorta area, and stacking up, this will give a uh, outline of the aorta as shown here. And this gives us a nice three-dimensional features of the aorta. And after getting this, I select uh, the region of interest by chopping um, incomplete uh, branches. And we need to divide this uh, geometry into small pieces so that we can calculate velocity and pressure on each grid point based on images or image-based uh, inflow information at the um, sinus level or any other level with um, outflow information, how much of flow goes out through this branch or that branch. And sometimes we give uh, uh, wall motion information included along with uh, broad properties, like density or viscosity. And with all these information, we calculate flow, velocity, and pressure in the aorta. And for the um, inlet velocity information, we use um, phase contrast MR. And this is uh, typically given, by, um, given as a pair of images, one called magnitude image and the other called phase image, and these these are typical given image in animated way. So time series of images were obtained. This, this one gives uh, anatomy information of the cross-section of the aorta, aortic root. And this picture is representing, um, the brightness of this picture is representing the velocity magnitude through this plane. And after delineating aortic root shape using magnitude image, we can map the velocity of uh, velocity in the in the middle of aortic root, as shown in column up here. So this is another representation of velocity profile using the mountain-looking shape, which means uh, the height of this mountain is representing the uh, corresponding to the the velocity magnitude going ahead. And then it's difficult to see, but there are some going back, the valley kind of uh, structure as well, showing a backflow. And this is a very intuitive way of visualizing the velocity patterns, which I will show more in the later this presentation. And also, because this is given, the data is given as a time series, we can do uh, the procedure at each time point to obtain or reconstruct flow waveform, how the flow develops in time, or velocity development in time. And as this is given as a time-dependent manner, we can also uh, calculate uh, how the, um, the radius or diameter changes in time, or you might want to say cross-sectional area. So this is a delineated uh, lumen uh, boundary as well as the outer wall boundary of a cross-section of the aorta. And these lines show how this 
the calculated diameter changes in time. So this is inner boundary, that's the outer boundary, along with the cardiac cycle. So it highest, uh, it dilates the most in the middle, corresponding to higher pressure in the middle of the cycle. And using some, um, using this data, along with um, simple structural mechanics uh, equation shown here, assuming the aorta to be a cylinder, also along with the uh, pressure of a patient, the systolic and diastolic pressure, we can back calculate um, elastic modulus of the aorta. That's a local elastic modulus. And then in this particular case, the elastic modulus came out as 400 kilopascal, which is very much in the same range as the reported values. So using these methods, what I did is to uh, investigate the flows in um, patients with bicuspidiotic valve, who also has a, a aneurysm. And as uh, discussed earlier, these two works together show um, bicuspid aortic valve morphology, a phenotype, matters to how uh, the patients uh, <coughs> spend time after, I mean, either freedom from valve operation or not. And we even in part think in this uh, relationship, there's a role of hemodynamics <coughs> And that is why we are looking at flow patterns in bicuspid patient. And one example shown here, I show here, is a 46 years old male patient from Greece uh, who had the right and non coronary cusp fusion. And this patient developed a very big aneurysm in ascending the aorta. And this is a reconstructed a three dimensional aortic geometry from MR images. And with a uh, phase contrast MR image at the mid sinus level, I calculated flow in the aorta, as shown here. So these little arrows all represent direction of the flow, and uh, with the color mapped as uh, the magnitude of the flow. So the velocity coming through the valve is going straight to the aortic wall here uh, at very high velocity, this is uh, um, maximum three, but this is actually more than three uh, millimeter per second, that is very high. And as the velocity hits on the wall, this causes very high shear stress as shown in this color map. So you can see very big area of red in, at the impingement of the flow. This could be very damaging to the wall. And to um, see more uh, about the uh, effect of this flow impingement and high wall shear stress, we had a look at histology of the tissue as well. So this is a tissue sample from the same patient at the exact same location as the flow impingement. And we observed the very thin area of aorta in the middle. And shown in histology, so these are histological samples, cross sections in at this point, that point, and that location. And this section shows thin aorta, as thin as 0.39 millimeters, where it, that's uh, very thinner in comparison to normal 1.3 millimeters. And also I want to point out another thing in this middle section. We can see media from the left and then media on the right as well. But uh, we don't see any media in the middle. This is a disrupted in the middle, uh, clearly shown here. And then we also saw a uh, structure of elastic uh, fibers disrupted also uh, uh, along with the absence of elastic, uh, sorry, smooth muscle cells and presence of some inflammatory cells in this area. So all these information all together suggest this area of flow impingement is subject to higher ruptures than the surrounding part. We also had a look at a post-operative condition of the same patient. So this uh, geometry was reconstructed in the same way uh, from 13 months follow-up of the patient. 
uh, with the freestyle cosine zero graph for the root as well as uh, the Dacron graph for any reasonable delta reconstruction. And comparing the flow, we can see the flow in post operated condition is very smoothly going along the delta in comparison to the strong jet heating on the wall in preoperative condition. And also comparing shear stress, the post operated condition showed very lower values. And this, um, another set of movie shows um, the flow and shear stress patterns in the other representative type of uh, BAV patient, which is a right and left coronary fusion. And in this patient, the flow is interestingly going through high velocity flow is coming through the valve and going through the middle of the, the aorta. And because of that, the shear stress on the wall is not very high because there's no flow impact on the wall. And here onwards, I would like to show you a bit more about uh, what we've done on uh, post LD good replacement uh, conditions. And as this is also explained uh, before, discussed before, the outcome from aortic root operation, replacement operation, depends on the type of uh, bowel substitute. <coughs> and for example, this um, plot shows uh, comparison between autograft and homograft uh, presented in this paper, which is very different after 10 years. What I did here is to compare flow char characteristics of different patient groups, one with the autograft, one with homograft, and one group with bioprosthesis, this is a porcine xenograft, along with normal control. And these movies show uh, representative flow patterns of normal and three patient groups. And the normal case is showing the flow coming through the valve as shown with this uh, hill coming up with very flat on top with the triangular shape coming out. This is corresponding to the opening, the orifice area of tri-leaflet valve, which is very normal. And if you look at um, post-operative uh, flow patterns, you can see quite a difference. Looking at this autograph, this maintains a triangular shape and then the top is very flat. Whereas the homograft and freestyle in these cases shows a sharper distribution of velocity with a jittery uh, velocity with higher value on the, in the middle. So this is uh, associated with, as um, analyzed as a group, with the orifice area normalized by, difference in the orifice area normalized by aortic sinus area which is shown on the right. So home autograft, black and normal, um, light gray, showing a very wide opening of the aortic orifice, whereas the homograph and bioprosthesis show lower opening, which is corresponding to uh, higher velocities going through the valve, because the, for, for these valves, the velocity, sorry, flow from left ventricle has to come through narrower opening. And with, after <coughs> looking at that, I had a look at also potential, the effect of the difference of these velocity patterns by putting this in the same uh, neotic geometry to see how the wall shear stress could be different depending on the difference in the flow patterns through the aortic route. And then this is clearly showing the highest velocity for bioprosthesis is called causing highest shear stress, which could be influencing um, the fate of the post-operative root, uh, sorry, post-operative ascending aorta. And in addition, I'd like to quickly show about uh, one of the main topics in this conference, uh, Tavi uh, doing similar stuff uh, with previously done in my talk, um, comparing pre and post-operative uh, conditions. So these are flow 
profiles, temporal pro flow profiles, pre and post operative, which are very similar in the maximum value. However, the velocity patterns, pre operative and post operative, look very, fairly different. The pre operative velocity is more pointed with a higher value because uh, this uh, patient had the calcified valve and the opening is narrow, so the velocity has to be uh, higher for that. <coughs> having similar flow, uh, flow rate coming through. And post-operatively, this, this became uh, milder. And if we look at the flow streamlines, we can see the difference. The preoperatively, the flow coming through the valve is disturbed, and then you can see wiggly lines coming through the ascending water, whereas uh, post-operatively, the streamlines are going very nicely along the the order. And in the end, I'd like to briefly touch on um, another aspect of biomechanical feature of the aortic root, which is uh, more like structure type um, variable. So what, why we are interested in the structure is uh, it's related to Ross procedure. So <coughs> people have been saying uh, this the concerns about loss procedure is a late root dilatation after some time. So um, the loss procedure patient, the autograft, tend to have larger diameter. But uh, the question is, do we have to handle them as an aneurysm or not really? So to see that, we, what we did is to compare the uh, distensibility of the aortic uh, ascending aorta for non dilated autograft, which maintains diameter less than 4.5 centimeters, with a dilated autograft group, uh, which has diameter larger than 4.5 centimeters, along with normal control. And this is showing um, elastic modulus comparison. So this means a uh, higher elastic modulus is um, high, stiffer aorta. So this MDG is non-dilated non autograft, and DG is dilated autograft, and C is controlled. And in common understanding, the um, aneurysm wall or dilated wall is having a higher stiffness. So it's stiffer for aneurysm, as also shown in this paper, for example. Whereas uh, our result is showing the uh, dilated uh, graft sorry, non-dilated graft has stiffer um, characteristics, characteristics, which is contradictory to our understanding. So we are still thinking why this is happening, but uh, we, what we can see here is something is different in the graft. And one of the suspicion um, we have is because uh, we had a look at the mean age of these groups, which is uh, higher for non-dilated graft. And dilated graft has a 45 mean age and control is a 36 in main mean age. So usually the older uh, generation has a stiffer aorta. So this might be one of the reasons we are seeing this uh, result. And as future direction, we are now very um, eagerly looking at uh, relationship between flow characteristics and vascular morphology. Because uh, as we can see here, uh, aorta, aortic root morphology varies really a lot. And these are, by the way, from, all, from uh, patients after loss procedure. And we made cast models of lots of patients, including descending aorta. I indeed have uh, some examples here. This is a life size a cast model, and if you want to uh, have a look, please come later. And um, we are trying to correlate the flow, result of flow simulation and this uh, morphology to see more like solid findings of uh, uh, biomechanical knowledge, which could be useful in um, clinical practice. And this also leads to uh, flow distribution to other parts of circulation, coronaries or other organs, which is also very important. 
And as conclusion, I'd like to point out two things. One is in vivo measurement of blood flow characteristics and resulting shear stress provides important uh, clinically relevant information. And this is particularly useful to evaluate uh, hemodynamic function of uh, root substitutes, as shown here, um, which differ depending on its type, providing different low shear stress environment in the ascending order. And all these findings and accumulation of expertise is going to be uh, used in our collaborative uh, project in Doha on more uh, bicuspidal, bicuspidal patients. And in the end, I'd like to thank all the collaborators and um, organizations who helped us really a lot. And thank you very much for your attention. Yes, that is uh, one of the uh, topics we are very much uh, keen to do in the next step because uh, at the moment we are looking at um, the mid sinus level to the downstream. So, and we are using um, flow mapping from MRI acquired in the mid sinus level. So, we are at the moment uh, looking at the region downstream to the valve, not uh, including the valve. So, well, obviously, it is very important to understand the interaction of the flow to the valve. Also, as you said, the uh, incompetence and all those things are very important clinically. So, the ne as next step, I am now trying hard to include this valve motion into this type of work. So, well, I, I should say I haven't done yet, but that is a very big interest of us. Is there, is there a way to study the stress of the fibrous skeleton of the heart in the um, Yes, uh, theoretically, yes. It's, um, it has been done by some people <laughs> using very idealized um, shape of aortic root. And some bits, those works show stress distribution in systole as well as diastole on leaflet as well as uh, the aortic, entire aortic root structure. But none of them have done the um, work on real aortic root. I mean, the real geometry of aortic root as shown here, which has a lot of lots more complicated structure. So what I am doing, intending to do, is to work on this type of a uh, real aortic root structure to see the um, stress patterns in diastole and systole. Further questions? I have one uh, with regard to the <coughs> morphological changes. I mean, uh, have you have any cases where uh, the valve has been operated or uh, has been improved the structure so that the, those peaks are gone? And is the vascular morphology, can this revert? Yes, um, I do have uh, one case of valve reconstruction. And then this shows, well, very similar to what I showed pre- and post-operative comparison in this um, presentation. The flow after reconstruction is much uh, milder and going straight into the uh, ascending order without hitting anywhere. So, will the morphology also refer to a normal power structure, I mean, the normal matrix and normal uh, wall structure? Um, is that, so does that mean uh, structure, or biological structure? Yeah. Um, that is uh, at the, the moment, not yes. <laughs> not w um, because I am relying on MR images which doesn't show the mo uh, biological structure. So it is, at the moment, I haven't done that. Sorry, to answer your question, 
<coughs> obviously we don't have specimens following surgery to see whether it normalized or not. However, uh, there is one study by Hal, Hal Dietz uh, in an animal model where they used uh, HE1 receptor antagonists to antagonize the, the, uh, um, the abnormality in TGA beta 1 and um, it was just like magic in the mouse model uh, that the, uh, the aortic wall normalized in structure uh, whereas uh, there was a dilated iota, and then he, they used the 81 receptor antagonist, and both the structure of the iota as well as the lung was reversed. But that's really in a mouse, and uh, using either antibodies to TGF beta 1 or 81 receptor antagonist. In humans, uh uh, uh uh. This is more like a clinical question, so maybe I can ask Mark D about this. But uh, I, I very much, I'm very much intrigued by the fact that it, if the flow is misdirected, it does a lot more, much more damage than if it's well directed, even if it's fast. We see this in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients, for example. They have huge gradients in the subaortic regions, but that the, the valve and the outflow is normal, and the aortic, the, the aortic root is not damaged usually. Even the valve is not damaged. What well, do you think? We are at the moment looking at. HCM patients as well. And then preoperatively, because of the LVOT structure, obstruction, the flow is very much skewed. The, in general, the velocity is highest in the middle, but uh, with this uh, HCM patient, the highest velocity come, appears on the very near to the wall. So that- But it's not hitting the wall. Not hitting the wall. So the shear stress is not increased. Not ha very much increased. Yes. Because they, they don't usually see aortic root, even though people they may have very long standing obstruction, yes. many years, they don't see aortic damage usually. Yeah. Yes, however, as always, however, um, uh, uh, Rio has been looking at before and after surgery and showing the pattern of flow, and it seems to be, uh, although it's eccentric, it is. Uh, but the, the interesting thing is that um, uh, looking at the mechanical properties of the aortic wall in patients even without obstruction in HCM, uh, they seem to have stiffer aorta. And it is said to be part of the genetic abnormality, whether that's the case or not. Um, no, it's said because of the I mean, there was one paper from Israel uh, uh, correlating it to fibrosis of the ventricle and saying it is to do with the genetic abnormality and that the genetic abnormality, while it is in sarcomeric proteins, like you have said in your paper, uh, it does affect fibrous tissue. And uh, the, the theory is from these limited Measurements we're limit we're we're measuring it again, uh, saying that the iota is stiffer, but it doesn't dilate. You're right, but it's just uh, academic, if if it is true. So, is there any further question? If not, I think we will close down the session. Thank you very much for the excellent talk. For the people, thank you for coming. See you tomorrow.